Okay, for our next assignment, assignment six, we are changing from raster imaging, which uses pixels, to vector imaging, which uses anchors and vectors between two anchors to make uh, perfectly clean shapes two-dimensionally. So we're going to start with a kind of a logo mashup, you know, concept driven graphic that has to work first as just a black cutout shape. So for instance, this one was for a theme uh, that a past semester chose called Angry Elementals. So this took water, H2O, and made it angry, right? And so this was the cutout shape. You'll see it's a PNG here. It's just floating black shapes. You want a good vector graphic that's really, we're doing a symbol here, a graphic symbol. So it's like a logo. You want it to be simple, versatile and clear, right? And if it's simple, versatile and clear, that means that it's easy to add color and effects to it, but it's not necessary, right? At its simplest, it still communicates clearly. In the sketching here, I liked all the flames and these ideas, but in terms of simplicity, you know, it got pared down. So often that's how your sketching will work for this. Here's another one for angry elementals, different thumbnails, um, the one that worked best was more unified as a single image. So you have a bonsai tree flipping you off. And then it supports the color. Or here you have this tsunami kind of overtaking San Antonio for angry water. And then in the coloring, not only is it colored, you can add kind of glow effects, you can add textures. This is all kinds of things you can do once you have that clean vector. On and on and on. And there's no reason a logo can't show your own personality, right? So this isn't made to look corporate. It's just made to look very clear, simple, and versatile. So if you go to your assignment sheets, this is a big change from all the compositing we've done. So I actually give you a link to some slides that talk about the basics of logo creation. And this is a big job for digital artists to be able to do brand identities, right? And there's a few just basics I want you to know about graphic symbols, brand identity, and logos before you start sketching. So you can start thinking of some of the variations that are out there and you can start researching and finding ones that, that speak to you, right? I call it a vector mashup project because I don't want you to just do this in isolation. I want you to think about what logos and what symbols out there are you drawn to that you think really work well, and then maybe kind of modify some of those elements into your own. So here are the different types. A pictorial logo is just an icon, right? You don't need any text to go with it. Starbucks, for instance, changed to a purely pictorial logo about oh, eight years ago or so, where they got rid of the Starbucks name around. Nike, same thing. So with enough recognition, you can get rid of any text and we just know what it means. Logo types are still pictorial in nature, right? Like Coca-Cola, Visa, Subway but they're logo types, which means that they customize type in a visual that becomes really recognizable and gives you a sense of the property, right? And the USA one is particularly clever because it uses the negative space there. Combined logos, or what are sometimes called combined marks, really rely on both at once. So the 1978 Nike really relied on both at once, but their current one does not. And Starbucks, same way. But it's hard to imagine Burger King ever getting rid of its text, right? And still being recognizable. So here are the three things you're really going for with whatever graphic symbol you come up with for assignment six. You want it to be clear, you want it to be engaging, and you want it to be versatile. So clear means that we're not confused when we look at it, right? There's not so many different aspects or layers or story elements that we get kind of uh, turned around looking at it. 
engaging means that even though it is very simple, right, it holds our attention, it makes us curious, and it gives us things to enjoy. Even if that's just simple changes of direction, uh, use of eye movement, use of negative space. And then really, to me, the biggest and the most useful skill to learn and why we're going to focus on, on vector imaging is its versatility. That a logo that's done well, a graphic symbol that's done well, works tiny on a business card, but also works really big on the side of a semi-truck, right? And it's the exact same shape. To do this well comes through, goes through a lot of steps, but reference, is, reference and research is a big part of it. So don't just go right to sketching your ideas without really thinking of what your concept is. Uh, I'm giving you the concept, that's what's called the brief, and Art Club chose it. And for this semester, it's leave no trace, fire and water. And I'm kind of thinking of it more as an achievement badge, a merit badge kind of symbol than as a logo. So here are some three uh, basic design approaches that you might try with your sketching. The most common is central symmetrical. So it means whatever, especially for a pictorial image, right? Whatever image you come up with, it, it functions as a target. You know, it draws your eye right to the inside and your eye goes right to it and then it leaves. So everything is kind of, it has its own gravity. Everything radiates towards the middle. Dynamic means that the eye works by moving across it. And that directionality is part of the logo. I think that works best with Nike, right? And the swish because it's about speed. So it doesn't make sense to keep that all, all that eye movement in, in the center. Uh, Twitter to a lesser amount. And then the rolling stones like tongue, you really feel with the angle of it, the tongue coming out of the mouth, right? And that's a lot more interesting than if we were seeing like the mouth and tongue just from the front and it was more symmetrical. And then something that's a lot of fun to play with, especially because we're going to be first designing this as just a black cutout shape, is to play with positive and negative space. To realize that color is not an essential element here, but your positive and negative space and its use can do a lot of the work for you. So having that S be not really there, but be perfectly readable. Or having this city skyline not really be there, but be perfectly readable. And uh, this panda for the World Wildlife Fund, it leaves so much open space that the white of the panda is just as important as the black, even though it's just a black symbol. Right? Or the faces turning into the eagle, or, you know, on and on and on. So in Illustrator, this is why I give you uh, these slides. So they're available under assignment sheets. Illustrator can be a bit of a, if you're brand new to it, you haven't played with it, it can really be a bit of a burden to learn it. And they're, they're making no attempt to make it easier because it's been around so long, there's way too much industry that doesn't want them to make changes, right? But the main tool in Illustrator is what's called the pin tool. And the pin tool, I want you to think of it like it's an X-Acto knife on black construction paper. It's what makes just the clean shapes that you want. And it gives you full control but you have to do all these different things to change it from straight lines to curved lines. You have to pull out Bezier handles. You have to add anchor points. You can alter anchor points. You can change directions, but it's not at all like actually drawing. And we're gonna learn some tools that are more user-friendly than the pen tool, but this is the basic. So I wanted to give you this cheat sheet. These are the main um, you know, signifiers. It's kind of like making selections in Photoshop. The pin tool is as important as that in Illustrator. So we'll refer back to it. And then it's always good to practice. So to try to like mimic these shapes and play with the anchors, you can do all of this in Illustrator. So you use the pin tool, especially when you want everything to look just as clean as possible. Not that all graphic symbols need to be really clean looking. There are some other kind of uh, helpful tips so the width tool, once you've made a stroke, you can actually uh, play that shape and make it kind of more elegant and into a stronger shape using that. Once you have your vector shape, you can do certain things to add texture and make it look more retro. There's like a scribble technique you might want to play with. There are built-in vectors clip art that you can modify from instead of uh, drawing everything yourself to begin with. 
and then just on and on. The tool I like best is called the blob brush. And so we'll learn how to use that. I never use the paintbrush just because it does too much of the work for me, but you might find that it's really helpful. So notice the difference. The blob brush gives you a, a full shape that you can modify. The paintbrush gives you a stroke that then you can put um, attributes on, <laughs> like to kind of grow from the center. And then the smooth tool is really helpful because it will take away extra anchor points and it will even things out. But if it gets overused, it can it look really amateurish, right? So we also are going to work with two new file formats. So AI is an Adobe Illustrator format. I'm gonna go ahead and open one up just to show you. These, this is one, not that I made, but it's gonna inspire what I make this semester. Uh, this is from Pixabay. So it's Creative Commons open. Just search Tiger Vector and you'll find it in Pixabay. And as an AI file, just like a PSD file, it will open in an Adobe program. It will open in Illustrator. And so this looks a lot like Photoshop, but it is very different than Photoshop. So under layers, notice there's only one layer. We can make additional layers just like we can in Photoshop in Illustrator, but they're just used for organization. So if you remember back to when we used the shape tools in Photoshop, those were vectors. And every time we made a new shape, it automatically made a new layer. Remember that? So every time you make a new path in Illustrator, whether with the pen tool, whether with uh, the blob brush, it will make, if it's isolated on its own and not connecting with something else, it will make a new path. <laughs> so within that one layer are all of these different paths. And then these paths have been organized into different groups. So let's just look at the most basic one. This black and white one here. Let's turn off that background. And so this is what we're aiming for, for our black graphic symbol. A really careful control of each shape just like the shape tools in Photoshop, right? Each of these is a separately drawn path. And then because it's a symmetrical central design, they only had to draw each one on, let's say like the left side, and then they could just paste them all and duplicate them all onto the right and then merge them all together. So let's look at one of these paths. Let's see, what's a fun one? This thing that looks like a mustache. Let's play with that. So you can see that you get a little image of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just isolate that one. So notice it will uh, show up with blue. So if I wanna select just that one without having to go into the paths, I can use the white arrow. This is a new tool. This is called what I call the small selection tool, but its real name is the direct selection tool. So if I click on just the mustache, then it selects it. And then I can move just the mustache. Command Z works beautifully in Illustrator. You'll use it a lot. If I want to copy it, I can hit Command C for copy. And then what I can do is lock this layer, turn it off just like you would in Photoshop, make a new layer, and then say edit, paste, but not just paste. We're going to do a lot of pasting in place. So there is no Command J in Illustrator. If you do that, it will change to outline mode, which you don't want to. It's a pain to get out of. Instead, to duplicate, you have to copy, make a new layer, lock the old layer, and then paste in place. And that gives you a duplicate to play with. So what if I wanted to play with this mustache? Well, I'm gonna use the small selection tool, and then I'm gonna zoom in with Command Plus, just like in Photoshop. And now to alter it, I have a few options. I can hover over these anchors. You see these red dots? Each layer you make will have a different color to show you the anchors and the paths. But that doesn't mean that there's actually any red in this image. So with the, the direct selection tool, the small selection tool, I can hover over an anchor and move it. And it's kind of like warping directly, right? Notice how it doesn't make any new anchors. I can also grab a handle, and this is how we work with curves and move that with the direct selection tool. So now I have something. 
I can also 